Well, what we can say, first of all, is the importance of broadband, internet uh, connectivity, and mobile broadband in particular. It's huge business. It's affecting uh, everyone's lives, businesses, uh, governments, and, of course, consumers. And what we're seeing today is, with the benefit of standardized um, technologies uh, and uh, huge economies of scale, um, how successful mobile broadband is across the world. There are more than 500, uh, 500 3G mobile broadband networks. So these are running on a technology called um, HSPA. Um, a lot of people, of course, are really interested in committing and, and doing fantastic things with 4G, with, with LTE. And uh, that's probably, well, I would say not even probably, it is absolutely definitely the most successful and fastest developing mobile technology that we that we ever that we ever saw now um, looking at the where the market is today um, we see more than six billion mobile subscriptions within five years or so that figure will rise to nine billion and when you look at the share of that uh, which are mobile broadband users again the the growth prospects are enormous uh, something like um, two billion in the next five years these are mobile systems. Um, the lifeblood, of course, is, uh, is radio spectrum. We need spectrum. And what we're seeing is the best combination of uh, radio spectrum for an operator to have is a relatively high frequency. Um, this allows an operator to build capacity in the network, but also increasingly we're talking about the importance of lower frequencies. Lower frequencies have the characteristics of traveling further, so they're better for outside of the cities, the rural areas, especially those areas where it hasn't been possible to, to put down wires and, and, and cables, so there's perhaps no, no broadband at all. The lower frequency wireless does that job very well, and also it, it penetrates the buildings a little bit better, uh, or a lot better actually, in the cities as well as the rural area. So operators are looking in the main for a combination of high and low frequencies. Now where will this spectrum come from? And this will be a subject for the for the panel to explore, uh, especially um, the uh, availability of, of those lower frequencies I talked about. Uh, these are the frequencies that will reach into the large land areas, the rural areas. The solution which is favoured uh, by many governments around the world is coming from the, uh, the switchover of analog television to digital television. Uh, this is happening uh, at a variety of paces. Uh, well advanced in the US, uh, perhaps they were amongst the first major nation to to actually um, switch to digital television and their free up spectrum which could be used for mobile occasions and this happened with the rollout of LTE. In Europe the program is well advanced. In Asia, uh, an area of particular interest to us here of course, um, several governments are looking at uh, how they can release this spectrum for mobile communications use. Now, what's really interesting is uh, when you start looking at uh, spectrum and start narrowing it down to, well, which pieces and which bands and so on, um, the way that the industry is, is, is working has been to standardise um, operation of the mobile broadband systems, especially LTE, the 4G system, in actually a, a very large number of bands, more than 40 are already defined. Now that would be impractical uh, for uh, manufacturers to produce products with scale at low cost, um, which could support all those bands. So in reality, we are seeing um, certain bands emerging as, as, as popular um, or as uh, really appropriate to some of the main regions. So that's the sort of background. Now, specifically for this panel, what we would like to do is to explore the potential of, um, of a low band, which is termed APT700, Asia Pacific Telecommunica uh, Telecommunity, uh, were developers of this, uh, of this particular band plan. And it holds great promise, not only for Asia, but also there's a lot of interest in following that band plan in other parts of the world. For example, in Australia, uh, those frequencies have now been allocated to uh, to the operators. New Zealand will be uh, allocating the spectrum uh, in an October November time frame. Um, in the Middle East, they're looking at using part of that band. In Europe, we're also looking at using part of that band. Looking a little bit further across Latin America, 
most of the major economies of Latin America have also embraced the APT 700 band. And that's really promising because it gives manufacturers the opportunity to um, really recognize the scale, uh, get the cost as low as possible, which in turn then benefits uh, the users and will encourage a faster rollout and, and, and faster adoption of that technology. So that's just a little bit about the background. We would like to focus on the APT 700 because, band because we think that's got huge potential to be more or less a global ban. Perhaps at this stage, um, one region um, would be excluded, North America, they have their own ban plan. But looking at the scale of Europe, the Middle East, Africa, uh, Asia, Latin America, uh, Oceania, uh, this holds great potential for that band. Now, the panel will be exploring um, what are the implications on the ban choices for the device manufacturers. And um, I'd like to uh, introduce, uh, at least uh, at this point, their names to you, um, because we have a very distinguished uh, international um, panel. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Goran Bernstein, who is Director of TDD, Industry Development, uh, that's at Huawei, based in Sweden. Uh, Dr. Margit Brandl, who's Global Head of Telecoms and uh, Trade Policy at uh, Nokia Solutions uh, Networks in Germany. We have um, a regulator, which is important to have a view there, uh, from Mexico, uh, Mr. Luis de Locatero, and he's the Chief of uh, Regulatory Policy. And its markets such as, as, as Mexico uh, will benefit uh, very well from, uh, from lower cost and um, scale economies that we believe this band will bring. Uh, we have uh, Thomas uh, Welter, who's the Chief Frequency Officer for one of the European uh, mobile network operators, uh, SFR, based in France. And uh, last but not least, Mr. Mike Wright, who's Executive Director for Networks and Access Technologies at uh, Telstra in Australia. And uh, he, uh, he's representing an operator who has already invested in that spectrum. And perhaps one final comment to make, but really building on the last panelist, recognizing the importance for uh, industry to um, respond to uh, the potential for global scale. Um, last month or September, third week or so of September, um, a major industry initiative was launched involving uh, ourselves at GSA, uh, Telstra, the network operator, the GSM Association, which represents the world's network operators, to promote the benefits and opportunities uh, which will arise from using the APT 700 band. The motivation there is for manufacturers to understand the potential and to commit to uh, investing and developing products, putting it in their roadmap. Right now, there aren't any products, but we would anticipate with, uh, with, with uh, the panel uh, such as this and uh, various other discussions uh, and seminars around the world uh, that the manufacturers will respond and support uh, network operators who wish to you know, deploy these bands. So that's just a little bit of the background. I think we're going to have a very, very interesting uh, discussion in the panel, um, something like an hour and a half. And so I hope uh, that you'll be able to join us or, or watch online. Thank you.